Hi, this is Ken Urban uh, for CSC 125. We're sort of continuing our work on uh, the point project. So uh, we're going to use code blocks to create uh, a new project, which we're going to start with. So I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to go to the console application. I'm going to choose C++. Um, I'm going to get the title point, since this is the point class. Um, New CCC compiler, same as usual. So we have it started. I'm going to use the built in functions to create a new class. Alright, so I don't know if I've done this before. I'm going to go into File, New Class. Um, the class that I'm using is called Point, right? Remember, we begin it with a capital letter. Um, I'm not going to put a destructor in. No inheritance. I got these two checked. Um, and ignore this stuff for now. Create it. Add to the current project. Um, make sure they're both checked, otherwise it won't uh, debug correctly. And now we have main CPP and we have point CPP and point.h. Um, and notice they have the include point.h in the point CPP, so I'm just going to Stick that over in name. I'm going to create a point called P, and it'll compile fine with no information, and it just kind of creates an empty object, but this is a way of testing to make sure all my pieces are where they should be. All right, compile it, compiles, it links, and it runs, giving me a little wall. Okay, so now let's talk about this point object. Um, we're going to use Cartesian coordinates, and um, I'm going to just do it as an X. And a Y. Um, we're going to put in, um, actually, we're going to kind of put in some inline functions here. Uh, an inline function is if you have a very limited amount of code, you can put it in the header file. Um, so for the constructor, I'm going to say my x is equal to zero and my y is equal to zero. Um, what better way to start off a point right at zero, zero? Notice that I have the squiggly braces here in the same line as the constructor. Now, there's a little issue here, so, so that when I try and run this, or build and run it, it gives me a duplicate or, a, I'm sorry, redefinition of point point, right? Because it's in here in point CPP, and it's also here in point .h, right? You can only have one function. So I'm going to get rid of it from here, right? And my point CPP is kind of empty at this point, um, right? So now I'll try it again, and all should work well. Yay, it all worked well. Okay, so. The first thing we're going to do is the mutator and accessor functions. Right? The mutator are the setters. It means change it, so we're going to set. Um, it's a void because it's not really sending anything back. And if it's set x, double, I'm going to call it data. Right? And we're setting x, so I'm going to do this in line 2. When x is equal to that data, semicolon. And we're going to set y, and in this case, my y is equal to data. Accessor means access, so to the accessor function, just get the stuff. So get x has no parameters. Again, inline, return my x. Oops, gets a semicolon there. Oops, that should be get y. Okay, return my x and my y. Um, the deal with inline functions is that you can't really do anything complicated in them. So if I'm only doing assignments, then I do it inline. Otherwise, um, we should do it somewhere else. So let's just see if it, let's just see if it compiles and have all the pieces together. Compiling. Yep, compiled, so all the pieces are still together. 
now let's go out in here and um, and I can see that that yeah I can set it but it'd be kind of nice to be able to print it I like to call it print I don't know why um, to see what's in there right so as I have right now this doesn't work because right it says class point has no member named print so let's go quick stick that in there um, print it is uh, a little too complicated for doing inline so I'm gonna just put it here right there's my I guess prototype and now over here um, yeah, I know I'm going to be using IO stream. I know I need, therefore, to have my using namespace standard and there's a void function. It's a member of the class. It's called print. It has no parameters. Um, now it's a member of the class, so I can use my X and my Y. So let's make it look like a point. So I'll put an open parentheses, and then I'll put the x, and I'll put a comma, then I'll put the y, then I'll put close parentheses, um, and end my line. I'm not going to put an end l in here because the point could be in the middle of the line, uh, and I kind of written it across. I guess I. Oops. Okay, up and down, I think. Okay, and it gave us 12.5, uh, 34.6. Um, so, I have now just sort of a basic point class that has an X and a Y coordinate and as a constructor. Now, often when we create points, we don't want to use the constructor to uh, oops, needs to, be capital, to build it, right? Because we we'll know exactly what's going to be in it when we build it. So I'm going to build a second constructor. Which has two doubles as parameters. And then lines getting a little long to fit. Oops. Lines getting a little long to fit on the screen. So I'll stick it underneath it. Right, which has two doubles. Says my x is equal to x and my y is equal to y. Basically just putting the two of them in there. Uh, and then in main CPP, I can create a point I don't know, L at minus 34 and minus 80. And while we're talking about constructors, I'm going to create another point called R. And we'll just print it out. Let's see if there's a semicolon there. Let's compile and run this. And there we go. 12.5, 34.6, 4, minus 34, minus 80, 0, 0. Notice that I was perfectly happy to take integers and um, pass them into doubles, right? Because it, it'll do that. Okay, so um, now that I've done this, right, we're doing all this on the Linux system, so it's all saved, right? No little stars here. So I'm going to go quick, put it up there. I've already logged in and stuff like that, so you don't have to watch me do it again. Um, so I'm going to open up the local directory, which has my point class I just wrote here. And I'm going to open up my remote directory, which is called blah, 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 point one. That's how you can find it. And I'm just going to drag over the ones I need, which are main CPP. Um, and I know that I've set up my settings so that it knows that CPP files and header files, it knows what type they are, so it can take care of it. So I can copy that. Maybe I should grab more than one at a time. Um, 
I don't need the project file. Yep, copy that one, and then the header file. Copy that one. So now they're all over here on the Linux machine, and we'll save it for another time. Compiling. Okay. Goodbye.